been practicing for the past 16 years. So today, I want to um, let you guys know a bit about YDT and YD, what YDT group actually does. Put in the and I'm great. Thank you so much, Noah. Appreciate it. Hi, Tsuko. Please meet your mic. Oh. Thank you. Yes. So I want to tell you about YDT group and what is that YDT group does and why is it that it's called YDT group? Surely a group uh, means that there's other departments under that umbrella. And yes, definitely that is what YDT group means. And I'm going to just break it down for you. Okay, welcome, uh, Tajo. Welcome, Deboha. You, you guys are welcome. You're just coming in as I'm introducing YDT Group, and I'm telling you guys what is it that YDT Group does. So YDT Group is a company that has the world's first one-stop property shop. One-stop property shop means that under that umbrella, there is YDT Financial Advisors, there's YDT Property Developers, there's YDT E-Bonds, there's YDT real estate agent, and also uh, YDT has an official partner, which is Nozipotlali Attorneys. I'm sure so many of you have already seen it on the poster. Nozipotlali Attorneys, is, uh, what they deal with is our conveyance inside when it comes to our, our property uh, cases, and they specialize with property transfers and bond registrations. So when I say YDT financial advisors, it means that we are a registered financial services provider and credit record rehabilitators. Also, under the umbrella of YDT property developers, it means that we deal with property developments and constructions. So under YDT e-bonds, we offer home loans and, and we are also bond originators. In fact, we have a direct partnership with a, with a bond originator and we have that under the umbrella of YDT Group. The last thing, YDT Real Estate Agents, it means that we buy property, we sell property, and we manage uh, residential and commercial or agricultural properties for you. So that is why it's called YDT Group. Under YDT Group, there's those umbrellas that make everything um, a group and they are called and that's why uh, YDT Group is called the first world's first one-stop property shop. So uh, when we do these webinars, we have been partnering with other organizations. Uh, on the poster, we also have Melty Institute. And what Melty Institute does is that they're a progressive business and leadership training institute. They offer trainings and deliver from the desks of diverse industry leaders across the country. So that's why we have partnered with them. They are also an, an uh, institution based on practical knowledge. They are driven by innovation in pursuit of excellence. So that is why through these webinars, we have partnered with someone like them um, because they are uh, like they help us offer the practical knowledge that we have of property investing. The other um, partner that I've spoken about is Nozipotlali Attorneys, and the last partner is Phenomenal Women. Phenomenal Women uh, has not joined us yet, but as they come in, I will um, just welcome them and introduce them. But for now, for the sake of time, because we only have an hour for this, I'm going to give over to Mr. Ebenatlali, who is the CEO of YDT Group. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Tiamo. Uh, I want to welcome everyone today. Um, I think it's our fifth or sixth edition of uh, the property investments beyond the lockdown. I, I hope um, everyone is learning through our webinars and uh, please do continue to go to our YouTube channel, go and subscribe so that you can catch up with any of the information that you might have missed in the previous ones. Um, thank you for joining us. And uh, today we are doing a different and very interesting topic. And today's topic, I would call it in 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 um, in, in should I say in in terms of a, a, a lady giving birth. Not that I've done so. So please bear with me, ladies. <laughs> um, and today's thing because it's about the now I have purchased the property, now what? And that is the stage of 
transfer, transferring the property that we're going to discuss today. And that stage, I call it uh, the, the labor pace <laughs> because it is the most uncomfortable stage, uh, but it has to happen before you give birth to that beautiful asset, one day asset that you are doing. Now, what is it that happens? Now, let me take everybody back, um, also for the sake of the viewers that are starting to watch this one. What is happening is you have got the right property, the right price in the right location. Um, you have been financed by the bank or you are even buying cash. Now, everything has been done. Deal is sealed and signed. You are, now the transfer process starts. So today's um, webinar, we're going to focus on the transfer process more than anything. Now, I'm going to be laying down the stages of the transfer process. I am also going to be telling you the parties that are involved in the transfer process. I am going to be going, uh, going through the different stages. There are no slides today because the slides would make this webinar very long. <laughs> uh, because there are many parties, many costs, and many things that are involved in the process. So then therefore we will not include slides because then each slide on its own might be its own webinar. And uh, I must also say thank you for the feedback, for the people that are giving us feedback. The feedback is giving us also a direction into what you would like us to focus on next. It also gives us um, an idea on the things that, we'd like, that we need to, um, should I say, improve on. We do not believe that we do everything perfectly. We keep improving every time. So thank you for the feedback. Uh, keep it coming. So today we are going to, in one step webinar, summarize the transfers, the transfer process. Like I said, in the transfer process, there is many webinars in it, if I can put it like that. But we're going to summarize it so that you understand and you understand the patient. Now, a transfer process is said to be taking place over a period of 8 to 12 weeks. Now, what happens in that 8 to 12 weeks? Because you would pick up and you would know that the actual change of ownership happens at the date office only, it only takes seven working days. But then why the eight to 12 weeks if the actual transfer takes seven working days? So now we're going to explain that what happens to get to the, um, to the 12 working, I mean 12 weeks. And that 12 weeks is estimated on something that if, is that is if the transaction is normal, meaning there are no complications, there are no things that must be done differently in this transaction. Now, here goes. Now you've bought the property, you've signed the offer to purchase, now we are getting to the transfer. Now what happens is, first things first, I will be going bilateral, meaning um, I will be going for a cash sale and for a bond uh, sale. So you must be able, please bear with me. Now, we will start with a, um, a bond sale, meaning a, a home loan, uh, you, you, you are buying through a home loan. You are approved with a home loan, so that now then you are buying through a home loan. First things first, after you've signed the offer to purchase, you've bought the property, it has been submitted to a bond origination through YDT Group. Um, it has also now been approved by the bank. The bank has approved you, now what? All right, now what the bank first does is the bank must then appoint the transferring attorney, um, rather the bond attorney. The transferring attorney was already appointed in the offer to purchase. It's already showing on the offer to purchase who the transferring attorney is going to be. Now we are focusing, the next attorney that must be appointed is the bond attorney. There are the third set of attorneys. Uh, depending on how the, the property was bought previously by the seller, the same property you are purchasing, now, let me explain that. If you have bought that property through a home loan, through a bond process, that same bond, if you remember with the other webinars, has to be removed or canceled so that the new bond must be done. Now, you might not have watched previously and you might not remember what this illustration means. This illustration means, I'm going to summarize it quickly in a few seconds. This illustration means when you apply for finance at the, bond, at the bank, you get a home loan. It is actually a home loan, not a bond. 
and then this is your house. Now, hold it out there, hold a thought. I'm gonna use a different example so that you can be able to, uh, to bring the two together. Now, when you buy a vehicle, a car, through the bank, you are buying, the, uh, the, the vehicle remains um, the bank's vehicle. It is owned by the bank. And therefore, that is the bank's security about that uh, on that vehicle. You only are allowed to change the license disc. You cannot sell the vehicle. It is not yours. You can only trade it in. And the bank uses their own vehicle because it's in their names as security. It is different when you're buying a property. The property is registered into your names from day one. That is why you can sell a property. It is yours. It is in your names. However, how then does the bank make sure that they um, do not lose the security? In other words, you do not take the money from the bank, the property is in your names, you sell the property, and the bank does not have any leverage or security. Now, what they do then is then they attach the home loan to the house. And that process of attaching the home loan to the house is called a bond, bond registration. And that process is done by the bond registering attorneys. Now, the reason the bank is attaching the home loan to the house through the bond process, it is so that you do not, you are not able to sell that property without paying them first. You can still sell it, but in your sale price, the amount that you're selling it for must be able to cover the amount that you owe them so that then the, 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 the sale can be, uh, or rather so that then they can get back their money uh, uh, back and you are not running away with their money. So that's what we are, uh, uh, that was just a quick <laughs> uh, a crash um, webinar, but it's a webinar on its own, which we're going to do as well. So that is basically what a bond registration is. Now there is the third, like I said, now I'm going back, the third attorney is if the previous, um, the current seller, the person you are buying from, if they had a bond on the property, that bond that they have then has to be, um, should I say, canceled or removed. So that requires another attorney. Now, because this process is done by the bank to protect their money, they appoint their own attorney. So that means then we involve three attorneys when you, during the registration process. Like I said, depending if there was a bond on the previous, uh, uh, the current seller has a bond on the property. It is the transferring attorney, the attorney that is changing names from X to Y, which is to your names. And we are working with our attorney, our partner, which is ND attorneys, we've got in-house conveyancers. They do that, they specialize with conveyancing. Now, they change names from the person you are purchasing from to your names. Secondly, we have got the bond registration attorneys. Those attorneys, remember? Yes, we've got those attorneys. Then we've got the bond cancellation attorneys, if there was a bond on the property. The ones that are removing the previous bond that was there. Now, who pays these people? And I think that is the most uncomfortable part. There are also then three different, or rather four different payments. Now we're going to talk about these payments on the purchaser and on the seller. But most of the payments are, are, are for your account as the purchaser. Now who pays these people? The transferring attorney is paid by you as the purchaser. But who chooses this person? The Transferring attorney, by law, it is the right of the seller to choose. Now, somebody might be freaking out, they say, wait, hold up, it doesn't make sense. The seller chooses the attorney, but I have to pay for it. Yes, I'll, 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 I'll explain quickly to you why it is set out like that in law. One, of course, you are the one who's purchasing the, uh, the property, so you incur all the costs. So it is you who's paying. But why can't I choose then if I'm paying? Simply because the the, the law protects the seller over the purchaser because the property is in the seller's names. So the seller has to be first protected over the purchaser. 
the seller has the first right of protection. There's even a, a, a law, but it applies on different things, but I'm just trying to show you that the homeowner is protected over everyone else. There's even a law that's called the first, uh, uh, the, 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 the right of first refusal. There's also the law, uh, there's many laws, but let's, let's, let's leave those laws, just to, we, we, we confuse everybody now. So, the transferring attorneys are appointed by the seller, paid by the purchaser, protecting the seller and the purchaser because they have to protect the purchaser as well. So this guy, even though he is appointed by the seller and paid by the purchaser, he then remains neutral in his approach to make sure that he fulfills all the conditions of the sale. Meaning, whatever is written on the offer to purchase, it's his right to fill, I mean, it's his role to fulfill everything that is there. Making sure that the seller will get their money at the end of it all, once the property is registered into the purchaser's names, you must make sure, or they make sure at end their is that then the seller get their money that they were promised when they offer to purchase, when they're purchasing the property. The transferring attorneys, are the, they are the center of communication on all the parties that are involved, that I'm also going to introduce as well, because it's not only attorneys that are involved. So they are the center. All communications come through them. All communications go from them to the relevant parties because they are the ones who are responsible for the actual registration. So they are the center of the registration process. Now, the second set of attorneys is the bond registration attorneys. The bond registration attorneys, again, are paid for by the purchaser, but are chosen by the bank. Why? because they are representing the interests of the bank. They are making sure that this process, on registration, the attachment of the home loan to the house, happens properly and fairly. Also, what their responsibility is, it is to make sure that all the bank guarantees, which I'm gonna explain now as well, are issued out to the transferring attorneys. Okay, let's hold up a bit, because there's a lot of background. Now you, now you understand and remember why I said that this process uh, uh, has got many webinars in it, but we are trying to summarize it as much as we can. Now, here's how it goes. When you are buying through a, a, a home loan, the monies are not paid out through the process. They are only paid out on the date of registration to the transferring attorneys. Now, if they are only paid up at the end, how then is everybody sure that as they continue the process, mainly being the transferring attorneys, that as they continue the process, uh, that they will get the money so that they can pay the owner after registering the names to you? Now, of course, there then something has to be given and some form of assurance. And that assurance is given out by the bond attorneys to the transferring attorneys in the form of what we call the bank guarantees. The bank guarantees is just a document, but that document carries so much power that the bank nor anyone can withdraw from it unless there are certain conditions that are not met. So those conditions are stipulated in the bank guarantee. So what then happens is the bond attorneys issue a bank guarantee on behalf of the bank to say, because we have approved you as the purchaser, we are then going to pay the monies over on registration through our bond registration attorneys and all those things are stipulated there. Therefore, you transferring attorneys being MD, uh, not the point attorneys or MD attorneys, then proceed with the transfer. So those bond guarantees is the main, one of the main responsibilities of the bond registration attorneys. Now, once then those bond guarantees are received, then the transferring attorney proceeds with all their roles and their responsibilities because now they know that the bank is committed professionally and they cannot be they cannot drop back when all those conditions are met and the bank has never done that when the conditions are met as far as i understand so now those are the bond attorneys so they make sure of that process that it is done to satisfy the bank to make sure that they are ready when it is time to do the registration at the end that seven days at this office, they, everybody's working towards that seven days. And we're still gonna talk about what they do 
to get to the 70s and still, uh, 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 introducing the parties and their roles and responsibilities. After the bond attorneys, then we have the bond cancellation attorneys, like I said, the ones that are removing the previous bond. Their role is simple. They were appointed by the previous bank that registered the bond. So let's say you as a purchaser are purchasing from me, Yabela Dali. Now, the bond cancellation attorneys, their role is to make sure that before they cancel the bond that is already in my property, I took a bond on the property for 500,000, that was eight years ago, I'm selling it to you. As I'm selling the bond to you now, or the house to you now, now I owe the bank from the 500,000, I only owe them 200,000, that is left. Now, that then means I am going to make profit of 300,000 in general calculations, the bank has to be paid. So the role of bond cancellation attorneys they, is just to make sure that the bank, which has a bond on the property, gets paid their money, which is 200,000 before they remove the bond. Now the transferring attorneys issue guarantees to them from the guarantees they receive from the bank. Then they issue the guarantees to them. So therefore they are also comfortable to say, let's continue the process because I know, based on the guarantees that I have, I am going to be able to get the 200,000 for my client, which is the previous bank, so that I can remove their bond for them. Now, those are the attorneys that are involved in the process. There could be other attorneys, depending if there are other attachments on the property. It is not only a bond that you can attach on the property, there's many other attachments that could be done, but which can be a judgment, maybe you did not pay something, and they attach the main attachments that will, that will include there will be attorneys representing those judgments uh, or rather those attachments. Right now, we are sticking only to this normal simple transition. That's why I said it is 12, 8, 12 weeks if there are no other things that are added or no other complications that are part of the process. All right, let's come back. What other parties are involved? Other parties, of course, if you there was a, a services of an estate agent were employed then there will be an estate agent um, who is also part of this process. What is their role? Their role is finished by the time the things are reaching the transferring attorneys. They might still be required now and again to assist the client with anything that they do not understand. Because the attorneys normally are sitting at their office and they're doing their work. Then they send the information to the, to the purchaser, to you as the purchaser or to the seller, and then they explain, of course, they are responsible to explain what you need to do. But the implementation of some of that information, if you are then are not able to do, then you can request or they ask your estate agent to help you implement and, and, and fulfill whatever needs to be fulfilled. Okay. The other party that is involved, it is the local municipality here in South Africa. Uh, the webinars are being watched by people also outside from YouTube and everywhere outside South Africa but we're mostly focusing on South African uh, uh, processes. Processes are not that far different from other countries in saturation and what needs to be done in between. But nonetheless, let's come back home. Now, you, it is then the local or uh, municipality that also is involved. Their involvement is they need to make sure that as you buy that property from me, Yabela, as the purchaser, you do not inherit my debt at the municipality, being the municipal rates and taxes, being the water, being the um, anything that is with them. If the electricity is provided by them or through them, that I do not have an old account that you're going to inherit. So their role is to make sure that then they issue a rate clearance certificate, uh, which I am responsible to pay as the seller because it is my account that I accumulated during the time that I was owning the property. So if I was not paying it up to date, then I'll have to catch up everything, make sure that you as the purchaser, you then get a property that does not owe anything in municipal rates and taxes, zero. And that is confirmed through a rate clearance certificate, which must be issued by the, um, the, the local municipality through to the transferring attendees. It is still their responsibility to make sure that is done. There is also another uh, role player, which depends then if the, 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 the property you are purchasing from me was in a complex. 
uh, or was it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, there's what was a body corporate involved, let me put it like that, or a homeowner's association. If then there was a homeowner's association involved or a body corporate, then we will also have to get another clearance certificate from the body corporate to make sure that the levies from the homeowners association and the body corporate are up to date. You do not inherit my debt from the levies that is accumulated there. That is also to protect you as the purchaser. You understand uh, that most of the things are to protect you as well as the purchaser. Now you're getting it, okay? Now the other part, the other uh, uh, institution or party that is involved then is SARS. South African Revenue Services. Now, what happens is with some properties, some properties attract what we call a transfer duty. The transfer duty um, is only attracted for properties that are beyond one million rent purchase price. This, this amount changes every year through the budget speech. When the Minister mm. of Finance makes the budget speech, they then they announce that as well as to what is the amount that the roof or the minimum amount that you will start to be liable for the transfer duty. Now for this financial year, the transfer duty only starts, you start only paying it from 1 million rand on the dot going upwards. So if your property is 999, then you're not paying the, you're not liable to pay transfer duty. Uh, however, the transferring attorney still have to submit this sale between you and me to, to the South African Revenue Services so that you need to get a certificate. A certificate has to be issued, which, uh, a trans, which is called a transfer duty certificate. Now, if then you are, your property is over a million and you are liable for a transfer duty certificate, then you, the transferring attorney will tell you how much SARS is telling you you must pay. Um, and then they will then work it out from there. Please hold a moment, I'm going to share a screen with you that then shows the transfer duty certificate, the current tables that are showing the slide of the transfer duty certificate. Please share, please uh, just give a moment as we share the screen, there it is. Now, if you look there, there it is, it says transfer duty. And then below that, it shows that from one rent to one million rent, the transfer rate is zero. It's actually one million rent and less. Then from one million rent and one rent, it then you start to accumulate. Now this, those are the calculations. You can be able to calculate the transfer duty that you are supposed to be. I'll just maybe make you make two lines. We'll just go through two lines to have an example. So if the property is between one million and one million three hundred and seventy five thousand, it will be three percent of the value that is above the one million. So it will be 3% of whatever price. So if your property is, is 1,375,000, it will be 3% of 375,000. So you can make that calculation as well. There it goes again. This information is available. You just go to the SARS website and you say the transfer duty table for the current financial year, and it will show you. So this table is what you are charged. So the transferring attorney make the calculations on your behalf, and then they show you how much you're supposed to pay. And then you pay it as the purchaser. And then they, the, uh, the South African Revenue Services issue then to the transferring attorneys a transfer duty certificate, which then declares that there are no taxes owed, owed over the property. Should then the purchase price be below 1 million rand and it is transfer duty free, then in such an instance, it still has to be submitted through SARS. SARS still has to issue a transfer duty certificate. But this time, the certificate will show that this property is exempted from the transfer duties uh, 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 to pay transfer duties. Now, these are the general parties involved. The, the, the last two parties is the electrical certificate, now, which is an electrician. Each property that is sold, if there is an improvement, remember from our previous webinars, we had explained that a property is land. The house that sits on the land is, is referred to as improvement on the property. So when, when in legal terms, when they speak about a property, they're talking about the land. And then they will ask, what are the improvements on the property? Then you state it's a three bedroom house, two bathrooms and whatnot and whatnot and whatnot. Now, if then a property has improvement, meaning there is a structure or a building on top of it, 
on the land. Then when that is being transferred, there then has to be an electrical certificate. It's called certificate of compliance. It's an electrical certificate that has to be issued out uh, to, so that to protect you as the purchaser once more, to show that the house is compliant, electrically speaking, um, is compliant uh, in terms of the South African laws. So that is, or rather fortunately, at least, at least that is another cause that is not for you as a purchaser. That is the responsibility of the seller. So the seller has to make sure that the house uh, is certified and has passed all electrical checks. So for that to be done, it is not just done by anyone. It is done by certified electricians, and they also issue that certificate that I called, it is a certificate of compliance. It's called a COC. But in our normal terms, we just call it an electrical certificate. So that has to be issued as well. It has to be in the file of the transferring attorney to make sure that you are then protected as a purchaser. You are buying a house that is, has got a car certificate and you have the right to that certificate to be in possession of it after registration because it is valid for a year. So if then you sell your house within a year, you do not have to issue a new one. And if maybe there was an insurance claim to say, and the insurance is claiming that uh, the house bent down, let's say the house bent down, and the insurance um, is wants to repudiate your claim and say, but the house bent down because there was wiring problems. Then you issue out your electrical certificate and say, sorry, the house is electrically certified. Thank you very much. Then they, then they are bound to pay the insurance. Okay. And then, then we go to the deeds office, which is the last stage of transfer, um, or rather the last party that is involved. This office is the actual place where the change of ownership happens. It is a, a government body that keeps the registrar of all properties in South Africa. It is a home affairs of properties, basically. So at that stage, if all is in place and in order, only takes seven working days. Sometimes they reject the document because something they are not happy with. Sometimes this process happens so long that by the time they get to them, the, the electrical certificate sometimes has expired. Sometimes some transactions take over a year. Uh, sometimes it's because the municipal rates clearance certificate has expired because that is issued for a certain period of time, which I'm going to explain as well what, what, what period of time that is. Sometimes something is expired, therefore this office said, no, we're not happy. We're rejecting the documents. Mr. or Ms. Transferring Attorney, start from scratch with, re with your lodgement of judgment. Okay, now I think we understand the rules that are there and what they are supposed to do. Now, let's then uh, go through the process together so that we know what fully happens in that period. Before we go there, are there any questions? Yes, um, we have questions. First of all, welcome uh, to those who joined us a bit later. So we have questions, we have two questions, and if you would like to ask a question as well, please you are welcome to raise your hand at any time or you are welcome to just type in the box. So we have two questions. The first one is from Teho. Teho is asking, is transfer duties still payable when buying from a new development? And then um, the other question is from Teho. or does it need to come out of your own pocket? Sorry, I, 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 I missed today. The only last thing I heard, the next question is from Tebu Ho, and then I didn't hear anything up until the end. Oh, Please repeat sorry. that question again. Okay, sorry about that. Tebu Ho is asking, if you buy property for 1.6 million, yes. is transfer an extra amount? And is it normally covered by the financer? Or does it need to come out of your own pocket? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I will answer both questions. Um, I'll start with uh, uh, say. Now, that, or is it Sehu? But sorry for not remembering who asked the question, but I got the question. Don't worry about that. The, <laughs> uh, that the transfer duty is payable. The moment the property is above one million and one rent, it's payable. 
even if it's a new development. What is not payable is the transfer fees, uh, Madam Teho, is the transfer, transfer fees that are not payable. Now, in some instances, the developer then wants to ab absorb the transfer duty fees, meaning they pay for it themselves. So if you hear a development that says a developer that says, I'm not paying a transfer duty, it is because it was absorbed somehow. And the reason you don't pay transfer fees on a new development, it is because the scheme was, uh, it was one piece of land, it had to be subdivided, or it then had to be uh, sectionalized for it to be sectional titles like flats and townhouses. Uh, subdivision is freestanding houses with a full title. So during that subdivision, it was already done, but it was not fully transferred yet. So when it gets transferred to your names, it's the actual first transfer, which was already paid for by the developer to the attorneys when they were registering the subdivision or they were registering the sectional title. So that's why you don't pay transfer fees directly from the developer. And you have to pay, of course, you pay the own registration because there is still a home loan, there is still a house that is being attached to the home loan. And then there was a question that if the property is 1.6 million, the transfer duty, can then you pay it? Can it be included in the bond or must you pay it? You must pay it extra then. And the different, or the previous, uh, should I say the previous, I wouldn't say it's a law per se, but I would say it is a, 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 an indication that was clearly made by the banks. The banks clearly stood out and they said, I think it came from the NCA law actually, but what the banks stood up and then they said, they said, if a person cannot pay for the transfer fees extra and the bond fees or the transfer duty fee as extra, that person cannot afford, that's what it meant to them, the property. So if you realize now, there will be very fewer cases where you will be told transfer fees are included. Um, unless it's a cash sale or unless the, the seller, which I have done many occasions uh, when we have given out of our good heart to the purchaser to pay for their transfer fees. Um, unless then that is offered by the seller. But then when they offer it, they then have to pay it in into the transferring attorney's account because then the bank might see it as fraud because what people used to do previously, which is what led the bank to make this decision or uh, uh, this, this communication, was that what then the agents would advise the purchaser and the seller to do. Let's come back to our example. They would say, let's say the property is 500,000 and all these other transfer fees and bond fees because there's no transfer duty. Transfer fees and bond fees are, an, are another 25,000. And then they will say to the seller, listen, let's make the purchase price 525, but including all fees. And they say the same to the purchaser. And then what that then would, would mean is that when the bank uh, grants a 100% home loan, then that would mean that the purchaser does not pay anything in. Uh, and the purchaser has uh, uh, been saved the stress of raising the 25,000 because sometimes you honestly don't have it. But now the banks then pick it up and they declare that as fraud uh, when they are involved. So that's what I'm saying, it's not a law. It's not against the law to do it, but the, it's against the bank's policy and law to do it. So the bond attorneys and the transferring attorneys know it. So in a cash sale, you can do it. You can say that. You can say the transfer fees are included. Nothing wrong with it. So the transfer duty say, has to be paid separately. Unless you are buying from a developer that, or, or the seller being a developer, anyone has offered and said it's, it's included or any other, there's clear communication by the, like I said, the seller or the developer. But besides that, you have to pay it in extra. I hope that uh, answers the question. Does it answer the question? Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, was the first question answered to satisfaction? Um, I think Tsiho is satisfied uh, because she clapped her hands. At this, I'm going to allow her platform to unmute her mic and just let us know quickly. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Yabela. You explained it very well. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Those are the questions for now. So I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you. Let me, let me continue. I've got 10 minutes left to do the last round. Okay. Now this round, remember you understood all the parties now. 
you know who's involved, who's doing what, where, da, 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 da. Now we're going to explain then how it works, which is going to be quicker. Now you have then, uh, now we're going back, the bank has approved. <laughs> the bank has given the final approval. Now the process starts, the transfer process starts. What then happens immediately thereafter, the original document, the offer to purchase and any other document must be handed over to the transferring attorney. The transferring attorney then starts to draft the transfer documents. The transfer documents are the ones that you are going to sign. They are the actual documents that give the transferring attorney the right and the power to register the property from my name to your name as a purchaser. And amongst those documents, there is a document that is called the power of attorney. The power of attorney is the key document that the transferring attorney needs because that's what me as a seller, I'm giving over my right over the property to the transferring attorney to say, yeah, take, transfer the document to you. Now, with that then being done, you sign those documents. Then the transferring attorney requests um, bond, uh, the, the bond, or rather the bank then appoints on the other side within 48 hours. The bank then appoints the bond attorneys. The bond attorneys, because they've got the same offer to purchase, which has got the names and the contact details of the transferring attorney, they then reach out to the transferring attorneys. However, if then you are dealing with an a, a, a advanced company like us, a one-stop shop, we tell you in advance, because then we are involved in the process of appointing the bond attorneys. We then tell you as a purchaser uh, from YDT to say, okay, the bond attorneys is X now. Then we tell the transferring attorneys is X because that is one of our added advantage to be involved in the transaction because then it speeds up the, the time instead of waiting for the bond attorneys to be appointed and wait for the instruction from the bank and conduct the, the transferring attorneys. Then the transferring attorneys conduct the bond attorneys to say we are we understand we are the bond attorneys in the transaction. And then the bond attorneys say confirm, yes, we are. Please send us your guarantee requirement. Now they are telling the bond attorneys are telling the, tra the transferring attorney, send us your guarantee requirements, and then they send the guarantee requirements and draft these. Now I'm just telling you some technicalities at the back that you don't get to see. But in, in me explaining, you get to understand the communication going back and forth. There are documents being drafted. Um, there are documents required from you as a purchaser to enable the people that are there, any attorney that is drafting to draft, you understand? So it is that what happens in between. Now the, the, the transferring attorneys give the guarantee requirements. Remember what bank guarantees are? They can give what they require to be on the bank guarantees based on the, on, on the offer to purchase or the transaction. They then also then continue to um, wait for the guarantees. They also ask the bond cancellation attorneys. Remember that's the attorney that cancels my bond. They then ask the bond cancellation attorneys about their guarantee requirements so that how much do you want do you need to be able to cancel the bond? They take that guarantee requirement, include it with theirs, and then send it to the bond attorneys. Bond attorneys, which they draft their documents, make their client aware, which is a bank, that the transferring attorneys are requiring guarantees in this format, with these conditions. And then they issue those guarantees back with those conditions, with everything. And then when the transferring attorneys have got the guarantee, the guarantees from the bank, they then draft the document. Sometimes they jump the gun, they continue to draft the document because they've done this and they know the guarantees are going to come in any case. But normally they will then wait for the guarantees. Now they've got the assurance that when we are done with this process, everybody's going to be paid their money that they're supposed to be paid from the sale. Then they draft the document. They call you as the purchaser to come and sign. But what happens is before the bank attorneys, the, the, the bond attorneys give out the guarantees, they have, to, you as the purchaser have to sign with them first. Because the bank may be ready to pay, but if yet you have not signed to commit as the purchaser that I am continuing with this transaction, I'm continuing with this, with this home loan and with this bond registration, they can't issue that. So the bond attorneys will call you then to sign then when the bank, is, once, once you have signed, they load their documents to the bank system. The bank has got internal attorneys that then work with the external attorneys to make sure that the current is in place or the documents are in place that need to be signed by you as a purchaser to make sure that you are then bound, you are not going to be able to withdraw from this transaction at any time again. 
Then once those documents are loaded into the bank system, they, have, they are checked by the, that which takes time, they are checked by the bank's attorneys, given to the bankers and all those people that are working with the finances, and then they get approved, and then the bank guarantees are issued by the bank to the bond attorneys, and then the bond attorneys issue the same guarantees to the transferring attorneys. And then the transferring attorney says, aha, now we can work. Then they, they call you to come and sign the, the, the transfer documents. Because when you sign as a purchaser with the, with the bond attorneys, you are not signing the transfer documents. You are signing the bond documents. You are enabling the, those attorneys to, to help their client, which is the bank, to attach the home loan to the house. Now the transferring attorneys ask you to come and sign the bond documents. Now, once you have signed, I mean the transfer documents, once then you have signed the transfer documents from the attorneys, the transferring attorneys, now they are certain, they are sure, that now this, the, trans, the transfer is continuing. Then they go to the municipality to apply for the rate clearance figures. Remember them, the municipality must issue the certificate. They go there to apply for the rate clearance figures. The municipality issues the figures. They say, hey, Yabela has been paying, but not on time. So he's about three, four months behind. Yabela owes 5,600. The transferring attorneys receive those figures from the municipality, informs Yabela. Yabela, the municipality says you owe 5,600. Please come and pay the account. Now, depending whether Yabela is ready with the funds or not, Yabela can say, I'm not ready with the funds. Please use those guarantees to help me get a loan to pay the 5,600. That takes time. Or Yabela can say, I'll make a plan, but Yabela knows that the back of his mind is going to ask friends and relatives to go raise that money. So that takes time. The transferring attorneys cannot do anything. They will, they, will, they will communicate to them, give them a time frame when necessary, but they have to wait for the seller to pay for the transfer figures. I mean, the, 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 the risk clearance figures. Then they receive the money. The seller does not pay by themselves directly to the municipality. They pay to the transferring attorney's account. Maybe it might take time for the money to reflect and to show. The transferring attorneys take the money, pay it over to the municipality. The municipality runs their systems. They confirm their money. And then they send it to the signatories to issue a trans, because they've got their own processes before they issue that certificate. Because that certificate is not only binding, to, is not only helping you as the purchaser, but it is also binding to the municipality. They cannot say to you, you owe money after that. So they have to do their internal systems to check and to make sure that these figures were correct and we've received the exact amount of money. If it is not exact, mostly with the Mangaung municipality and different municipalities we've worked with, if it is not exact to the last cent, then it brings an imbalance within the municipal systems and they might say, we are refunding you, pay again. It has happened, I promise you. And it has taken a two, three months extra delay for the municipality to reverse everything and happen like that. So the transferring attorneys have to pay the exact amount that is showing on the uh, uh, risk clearance figures. The risk clearance certificate is issued ultimately, then who municipality is happy. However, they issue, when they do, they issue the certificate, they calculate their risk clearance figures up to a period of four months ahead anticipating that should there other processes in this transfer take four months, there is no other payment that needs to be done. But if the property registers before the four months, they refund me as the seller the difference. Now, while that is happening on the site, then the transferring attorney also applies for the transfer duty certificate. If they, uh, they apply for the certificate and then the source comes back to say it is, uh, it is transfer duty free or this is the amount that must be paid. We know if it's transfer duty free, then the city starts issues the certificate, which they take their time. And they are the parties that are very sensitive in this process. You do not follow them up, you do not, they give you a time frame, at least seven working days before you talk to us about the follow up as an attorney. You follow up within that period, they take that file from day one. From the time you follow up, their systems are, are, are designed in such a way that the day you made an inquiry, they press uh, day one, start again. So the attorneys have to sit back and wait. If there are figures, same thing with uh, municipal figures. SARS gives figures, then they give you as a purchaser the chance to pay the transfer duty. You might take your time, you might have your own ways and, and strategies and plans before paying that transfer duty. Then the attorneys have to wait for you as well. You pay, they load into the SARS system, they get the transfer duty certificate. They have 
it should have already employed the, the services of an electrician, a certified qualified electrician to go and check if the, the house is electrically certified. Are the plugs hanging out or the things? Now, if they find the house, there are light bulbs that are out, there are cables that are torn. The electricians have to fix, fix those. The first, I must make a quotation. Me, as the seller who's responsible to pay for the electrical certificate, must accept the quotation. Then the electrician works, finishes, I must pay as the seller, and then the electrical certificate is issued. Now, the bond attorneys will also require insurance. I almost forgot that part is very crucial. They require insurance. This insurance, there's two types of insurance that they require. Life cover. Should you die, the most famous word of insurance. Should you die while you are still paying their loan, home loan back, what is going to happen to their money? So they want life cover attached to your life that is equivalent to the home loan or more. So that then should you really die, then the house could be paid up. We'll talk in the near uh, in, the, in the in the future webinars about the importance in the, of, of life insurance or of insurance when you're buying a property. That will have its own webinar on its own. Then then they are able to get their money back and release the house back to the family. If you do not do that, many people have not done it or they've done it at the beginning and then they've cancelled it. And we have bought a lot of those properties because the bank, the, the breadwinner is not there. Most of the time that person is a breadwinner. Breadwinner is not there. There's no life insurance. No one can pay the house. Now the bank wants their, their money. Then they go, they effect the attachment. That's when then they sell the house. They have to go to court to approach the court to say, we've got an attachment on the house, which is a bond. The person is not paying us. Please give us an, an order that we can sell this property on auction. And the property is sold on auction, they get their money back. Now, then there is the second insurance, which is the house insurance, meaning should anything happen to the house itself now, be, be it um, uh, God, they call it God's act, uh, earthquake, or be it should the house burn down, then you have insurance to make sure that it, 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 gets, it gets fixed up to the state where it was before. Because what happens is if it doesn't have insurance and it burns down, most people leave the house. Once they leave the house, they stop paying for the bond. All right. Now, when all those documents are in place, they are finished, it becomes a pile. Now that pile, the transferring attorney takes it. They know the documents that are needed by the disk office. They take all the documents that are needed by the disk office to now enlarge. They call it enlargement at disk office. And that's the actual registration process. That takes only seven working days. They enlarge the documents. When disk office is happy, seven days later, Congratulations, you are a newly registered owner of the property. That is basically the process. And I hope this makes, and I hope this helps everybody to understand. It, I hope it helps everybody to understand the, the, the process. It helps everybody to be patient with the process. Because sometimes one of the things, something goes wrong in the process. There are so many things that can go wrong. But because of time, I cannot go through those things that can go wrong. And then I open the floor to the questions. Thank you. Over to you, Tiamo. Awesome. Be before, before you take over, I'm going to ask that for the sake of time, can we only take three questions because we have promised that we are finishing at a specific time. All right, that is fine. Uh, we only have one question, Excellent. actually. So, except to post comment, we're saying thank you for this essential information, YGT group. Um, so the question is from Deboho. Deboho is asking, let us say you qualify for 1.8 bond, and okay. 1 bond, yeah. and you decide to buy a house for 1 million, but you want an extra 300,000 for renovations. Okay. Will the allow you or finance you for 1.3 million to allow for the, re for the renovations? Okay. There is no generic answer for that, um, Mr. Tebo, because it is only subject to the certain banks. There are ways of getting it to be like that, of which are acceptable to the banks and to the sellers and to law in general. Now, most banks will say, nope, we are only financing 100% of the purchase price. Other banks will say we are financing, we can finance up to 130% of the purchase price, which means then if 
those renovations fall within the extra 30 percent they can be done alternatively you then can request the seller if an, an agent is involved which it is that is why i always say people must use the service of an agent there was a period where people were just or going over the place i don't want an agent i don't want an agent you are removing a professional you are exposing yourself to um, to manipulation and to uh, um, um, to losing money or to losing out on certain information now if an agent is involved then you say to the agent listen the property is 1.5 i qualify for 1.8 i want that 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 done in the house therefore then the agent with you with in consultation with the seller they then agree and conclude that the purchase price is now 1.8 million however these are the things that must be done now the only limitation to that is that uh, the things must be specified in the contract which is to protect you so it's also it can also be a limitation so that money there must be a quotation attached with those things uh, sometimes the bank wants it sometimes it doesn't want it but the old the transferring attorneys must have all those conditions and then the main limitation with that is that the, it's mostly uh, to the disadvantage of the seller because now this one this 300,000 is included in the transfer process the transferring attorney cannot complete transfer up until that money is paid uh, or those renovations are done and you are happy as the purchaser alternatively they can finish off the transfer in consultation with the seller and the purchaser they can then do what we call a retention where they retain the 300,000 it does not come to you as the purchaser they retain it then they release it in in terms of payments as as, as directed by you the purchaser and the seller into the contractor who's doing the renovations so you do not have the freedom to do the renovations to do what you want you can choose the freedom you have is between you and the contractor that has been appointed to effect those those renovations that are equivalent to 300,000 that's the only place where you can talk you tell the contractor which by the way YDT is a real one stop shop we also have the property developer side of the business it's called YDT property developers where we do that as well where then the person says all right i want to do the renovations then we put it in the contract we inform the attorneys we submit our quotations and then the attorneys give us a go ahead to start whether we start up front or after registration depending on what is, is the agreement between the purchaser and the and the seller because sometimes the seller is in the house so therefore the renovations cannot be done they can only be done after registration and therefore at the time when they can be done we get a go ahead to say now effect the renovations or the extensions in the property and then we start effecting those sometimes the property is empty and we get a go ahead before registration but there are limitations but bottom line to answer your question yes sir, it can be done there are different ways of doing it and the money will not be paid over to you thank you all right, thank you. Actually, um, first I'm going to note Tsuho. Tsuho said she has a question, so you are noted, Tsuho. Um, so Deboha has a follow-up question, uh, which I want to read quickly. He's saying, um, I'm going to get to it now. Let us say you have a life cover for 2 million rand for okay. the house. Okay. Can the excess, when you <coughs> die, be paid to your beneficiaries, or how does it work? I just okay. please mute his mic. All right. Um, Tehu, that is a very good, wise question. The, what the table? Yes, he has a follow-up question. I'm <laughs> sorry. I was answering the live cover. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, Debo, over to you for the follow-up question first. Uh, no, that's the one from Deboho. The one oh, about okay. life cover for two million. It's a follow-up from Deboho. Oh, all right. That's a good question, Deboho. Um, yes. Remember the what, the what happens? Step. Yes. What happens with the life cover is that the you seed the life policy over to the bank, meaning you are giving them ownership though you are paying it though you are the insured life so you see yes they pay them the difference upon upon you passing away they then claim 
have got the right to claim first before your, your other beneficiaries or before it goes into your estate, your late estate. They then go and claim, and then when they've gotten their money, they, they, they only get paid their money only. The insurer needs to know their, they, they, they give the insurer their bond cancellation amount, blah, 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 blah. And then they could, they could, they came through the attorneys, the same attorneys that do this, they came through that. And then the change is paid over into your estate if there are no beneficiaries into, in, into that life insurance. However, we work with people's individual cases and we advise them differently. That's why the insurance part of, uh, of purchasing a property is so important that we're going to give it its own webinar. So please stay tuned. So matter while we are still at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get the updates when we load the video should you have missed a, a webinar. The next question, please. Or the last question, if okay. it can be, please. Yes, it is the last question, and I'm now going to give the platform over to Suho to unmute her mic and ask her question. Okay, thank you, Tiamo. Thank you, Yabella. Uh, my question is in regards to when you are preparing yourself to buy the property, should you apply for a bond directly from your, from your bank? Or I've seen, like, for instance, I've received emails from a place called a better bond and I remember they once did an uh, approximate valuation for me how much I could afford for a bond and they said no it's valid for six months you can go out into the market look at the properties you want but what's most advisable to first find the property then go do the financing or first do the uh, bond application and knowing that you have six months to look around I, I don't know what's most yeah, advisable all right um, again now, but this one is really made for you now. Great question, <laughs> Um At YDT, we have bond originators. I will not mention any other companies. Uh, I will not give them free a time. <laughs> um, we have bond originators, so we pre-qualify you. So we advise you to pre-qualify yourself with us, to get pre-qualified with us. We do that. We advise you to get pre-qualified before you start looking. Uh, we do that as the first step with, uh, with all our clients. The moment you become our client and you show interest, the first thing we do is we pre-qualify you if you're buying through the bank. We then pre-qualify you and then we advise you on what you qualify for and we sit you down and we discuss with you. Uh, of course, during the lockdown, mostly telephones or webinars, uh, I mean uh, Zoom or any other thing. But then we discuss, we advise you to say, listen, you wanted to buy for so much, you qualify for more, you qualify for less, this and this, the banks are happy, or you do not immediately qualify because you need to improve such and such in your credit record, of which we do also in-house at YDT to help you improve your credit record until you are ready, and then we take you back to the market. So please do get in touch with us, the whole letters help you, pre-qualify you, so that you are ready for the market, of which the market is currently ready. I hope that answers your question. So I hope please confirm. Yes, it does answer my question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, all right. That was the last question. So I think we can just wrap it up and thank everyone. So from my side, thank you everyone for tuning in. Please remember that we do this webinars every week and every week comes with a new topic. Every Friday um, and for the next three more weeks, we'll be using the same link. So you can just save the link for yourself. And just remember that every Friday, 1230, we have a different topic. And please um, remember to tell more people about it. The more people know about property investment and all these topics that, I mean, I previously didn't know anything about it myself. So I've been learning a lot. So if you've learned a lot as well, remember to tell people to come through and join us. I'm going to give over to Mr. Yabela. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Tiamo. I want to personally thank, thank everyone for joining in. Um, as I always say at the end of every webinar, we have not, I have not in the past many years I've been uh, involved in property and financial planning, just given out free sessions, mostly about property. And uh, this is the time that I'm doing it because many people needed our advice. We have many clients who would like to help people create wealth and build legacies through property ownership. Uh, not just one, to have portfolios. So our commitment is to build people's full portfolios and, and to become wealthy and create legacies for the next generations to come. So please tune into the uh, YouTube channel, watch the previous um, webinars, 
understand everything what we are about, but we will definitely be able to assist you. We've got testimonials every week. Maybe in the future, we'll also add them at the end of the webinar, just so people can understand um, that there are faces behind this and there are so many people that have been assisted through this. All right. Thank you very much. And I think we can now release everybody. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Please tune in next week. Stay blessed. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>